the busy capital of Vietnam, Hanoi, and its six million citizens played host in May to the foreign ministers' meeting of ASEM. The 45 ministers from Asian and European countries come together every other year. This meeting condemned North Korea's nuclear test, called for the release of detainees in Myanmar, and discussed climate change, trade and the global economy. The worldwide financial crisis was also the topic of a journalist's seminar organized by the Asia Europe Foundation on the sidelines of the ministerial meeting. The participants exchanged views on the current state of play in EU and Asia relations. In the European Union, many member states strive for a very tough stand on, on human rights issues, democracy, climate change when, when dealing with uh, Asian governments. Do you think that this is an ideal uh, approach for, for getting results that the EU would like? Yeah, um, I, whether it's the, in the European countries or the United States, really pushing in that way isn't as constructive and can shut doors before they're even open. Um, from what I've seen in Asia, and I've had cultural problems, um, and I'm Asian, um, it's it's really first this kind of openness to the whoever you're speaking with on the Asian side wants to know that you're listening. And so the first thing is, uh, before bringing a demand down, is probably first ask, um, be open, listen, um, and then be aware of cultural barriers. The European Union has to understand that you know it took almost 300 years or 400 years for the European Union to come to the stage where it is today uh, in regard to human rights, in regard to democracy. In many of these countries, these were completely not there 70 or 80 years ago. Well, I think in particular in the case of China, these can be very sensitive issues, but I think that both sides have learned that there is a certain process and a certain ritual, and that the way it's done is that the most sensitive points are discussed uh, behind the scenes, not in public. And um, both sides, I feel, have sort of come to a kind of understanding that that is how it's done. So it's not as if human rights are not unimportant as an issue for China to discuss, but uh, China has successfully, I think, managed to separate uh, these kinds of contentious issues from the business at hand, the thing that they really care about, which is the promotion of trade and investment. What Europe needs to do is to have a more inclusive approach when it talks to Asia. For the moment, there's a lot of grandstanding. Europe lectures to Asia, gives advice, you know. And what they need to do more, I think, frankly, is to actually listen to what the Asians have to say. Asians have a vast experience in dealing with issues like diversity, immigration, cultural issues, terrorism. These are all areas that we in Europe can learn from. And what I find so far is that these meetings are not two-way meetings. People sit down and lecture and talk to each other, and, and they don't really discuss issues of common interest. I think this is where we would need to move from rhetoric to real action and listening. How about the way that the EU is perceived in Asia, as, as opposed to the, to the role of the US? Do you see any differences well, there? Clearly the US, you know, being a far, uh, far mightiest uh, superpower, bigger economy, they carry more clout in negotiations. EU is seen as, you know, not carrying, not punching as hardly as the US. And so uh, the view is generally that, you know, people think that uh, negotiations between the EU and Asia take a longer time than, say, what the US can achieve.